Hello and welcome to our new Google Sheets video in Practical Sheets. Today we're going to combine two different Google Sheet files. Uh, here I have two regional sales and what I want to do is consolidate or combine them both in one table. So I'm going to have this consolidation file or combination file where I'm going to call each of these tables and I'm going to be able to have all of the data in just one table and with of course, being aware of that, that this could change, could have different rows so that it's always dynamically updating with the correct data. And if, for example, I delete this data, it doesn't matter. It will still be working. I hope you like it. And if you do, please consider subscribing or furthermore, going to the Patreon page or practicalsheets.com where you'll find all the templates of the more than 60 videos in the channel and courses in Google Sheets, Google Apps Script and more. Hope to see you there. If not, let's continue with the video. I have three files. Two are the origin files or the source files. And I have another file where I'm going to combine both of them. It could be two, it could be three, it could be four. Let's begin with two. And in further videos, we could add more to see how it flows. So for now, the first thing we need is to use the import range function. Import range function is a really, really nice function, but you need to be careful. So if you have 10, 20,000 rows and both each file has 20,000 rows, you may have some problems. So this is nice for not so big databases thousand rows, 5,000 rows, no more than that, maybe 10,000 rows each, but no more than that. I, I think there are better ways to do it. Not only in the, uh, it could, we could use SQL, we could use um, Google Apps Script. There are other ways, but import range is not made first for such big data. And second for data that is connected to other data. And many, if you have 50 connections, then maybe import range is not the best way to go because I've had a lot of customers and students that have had problems with a lot of data uh, being connected through import range. I had to do that, that uh, comment because it may happen to you if you have a lot of data, okay? So, and we're going to start with region one. So you can do import range. You can see my video in import range where um, I give some tips, but the first uh, I wanna do, I don't, I don't it may be easier to copy the entire URL, but I prefer copying just the, this ID. It's, it makes the, the formula shorter. And then we'll do comma. And if the data only has one tab, then you don't need to name the range. Just say, we're going to start from A1 up to E. So we can say here in quotation marks, A1 colon E prefer to leave it caps and close it. Okay. The first time you'll always get an error. The error is that you need to connect to your sheet. I'll move it up here. If this sheet is not from you, but from another user, then you may need some permissions. So uh, be aware of this. And if it's from an Excel file, it won't import. So just be aware of these minor tips. Okay. So I, know I have the first one. Now I need to combine it with the second one. So let's do the same first. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste it here side by side, but I'm going to change the ID. So the ID here is a bit different. Let's copy this and let's paste it here. Okay. Again, I'm going to need the permission for this specific file. Now I have my two different files. Okay. So the first case we're going to handle this in this project is when both tables have the same columns and in the same order, we could then do some weird query things when we change the order. And maybe this doesn't have the five columns, but only three, but for now let's keep it simple. Both tables, we're going to have the same headers in the same order. Okay. So given that I don't want to repeat my, my headers for this second one, I could start in row number two because the header will be the same. This is the first thing. The second thing is that I want this to be dynamic. 
This means that if I add new rows, this will work. So I'm not going to, this is why I'm leaving this E open with no number. I could leave it up to 10, but then if I add 11, 12, 13, 14 more rows, then it won't change. The problem with this is that I'm getting all these blank rows. So I need to remove the blank rows. There are a couple of ways of doing this. The one I prefer is to do a query. And the query, what it's going to do, I'm just going to do a very simple uh, query command where I'm going to say that where column one is not null. If you've been following my series in query, we've not arrived to this call one. I always put it with an A or a B or the name of the column. But if you are bringing the data with a formula, then A won't work. If you put here where A is not null, this will bring an error. So when the, when the range argument is a formula or a function, then the notation changes, and this is not A, but call one, okay? This is one of the first changes if you are a bit familiarized with, with query, but not, but not in an advanced way. So the same here, we're going to do exactly the same here. So I'm going to change this here. Okay, we put the query and here I'm going to put, let's hit enter for now. And I need to put this condition. It's exactly the same condition here. Okay, now I have both. Finally, what I need to do is to, uh, combine both tables to mix them up. So I'm going to copy this query and the first query, I'm going to wrap it up in, in some brackets. Let's give it a bit more zoom. And after my first query, I'm going to uh, place this semicolon and then paste the second query. Okay. So now you can see that I'm mixing both. I can delete this and you can see it in its glory. Okay, so there are a lot of things I could do. I could, for example, order it. Now I have this main formula, but this formula, then I could put it inside another query or a sort, or I can treat it as a single table where I could sort by the date or by the product, or I could add more things. I want to do one thing before I, I end, and it's the case where I don't have anything here. For example, what happens if I delete all of this. It's working great. But what happens if I delete all of this? I have a problem, okay? Because here I'm starting in A2 and I don't have any data. And my query is bringing an error because this query is being damaged. So I need to wrap this up in an if error function to prevent this error. So our final step will be to wrap each of these query functions in an if error. So let's put it here with a bit more zoom. And I'm going to do an if error. The problem with the if error, it, it's a bit tricky. Because if I put if error, and then here, normally, if you are familiar with the if error function, then at the end of the, if, the, the second statement in the if error function is what you're going to place instead of the, of the function that will return an error. So let's for now say that it will be just uh, blank. And the same here, if error, let's open it up and let's close it here, here with a comma and double quotation marks and that's it. I, I continue to bring an error, why? Because here I'm putting just one space, but it is expecting to be at least, how many columns I have here, five. I need to have a five or an array of five values. Okay, so this won't work. I need to create an array that has five columns. So I'm going to with with uh, with this with comma to put this. this is the second, this is the third, this is the fourth, and this is the fifth. I continue to have an error because I need to put this also here in this second one. Okay. Let's see. And now it works. it's working. So you need to replace if you, if in your cases, in your projects, you have, this is 10 or 20 or 30 columns, then you need to replace this by the 10, 20 or 30 columns. 
there's a way of doing it with some functions so you don't have to have a repeat this 20 times but for now i think this is the solution okay so now it doesn't matter that i don't have data in any of my tables i'm going to reload the data i had and now let's see tc diplomacy pandemic sellers okay so here let's wait a second maybe i'm going to refresh now we've waited a bit and now i have my two tables combining correctly finally i'm going to put some format here yeah, because the data it's not bringing them with the format so i'll just i could add some formatting here quickly and that's it okay so there are a lot of things we could do next we could for example if you want these let's say these are two regions and i wanted uh, to have the region at the side as another field we could do it uh, we could sort it we could bring more sheets as i told you at the beginning i think that more than 10 or 20 files would be a lot but maybe we could do the example with five or ten or and if, if you need to do it with more than two you just need to repeat this if error clause again and again and again with the different ids but we could maybe have a configuration or parameters a tab where we could list each file with each id and we could call the ids from that tab it's another option you just let me know how you think we could improve this see you next time and as always if you like this then you can find the template of this sheet in the patreon page or in the newly created practicalsheets.com site where you also find courses in google sheets google apps script and much much more Thank you so much. See you next time.